Good evening. <laughs> and welcome to this other hour in which we try to take what Professor Corno explained to you in the previous hour and build a concrete example. I divide this hour more or less in two parts. The first one that I hope will be a little bit more interactive in which I hope you speak and I wrote right here something and the other part in which I code something and show you how to um, realize a restful service in Python with Flask. So two parts are the first one is understand how to design a REST service and then design effectively a REST service based on our to-do application that we built in the lab and in the previous class and so on, that up to now it's a web application. It's a web page in which you add to a database some task, urgent or not urgent, and delete also some task and something like that. And then we try to design the REST API for this application uh, and then implement in Python with Flask a portion of this API. The other API that we designed today, I hope, uh, but we don't implement today, it's left to you on Monday in the lab, the laboratory, the exercise will be to complete this uh, uh, code that we, de we do together today. So, right now you have, uh, let me take uh, PyCharm. And our browser. In the last lab and the last lecture on Monday, you realize this. At the do application on the web that at the index.html page give you a list of uh, item, task in a table. You can delete this and can also insert a new task. No? Up, to now, up to now, you have a web server that give you, give to your client HTML pages, okay? So the web server up to now is sorry, this one. is this one, in which we have um, an index root here, that render the template, and then an insert task that with a form create the, the item on the database. And the database up to now, just to open everything, I open the database from here instead of uh, another program, but it's equivalent. And it's composed by your table task. It has an ID that is a unique for each row, a description of your item, and the fact that it is urgent or not, where one is high priority task and zero is a low priority task. And this server give to your client is right now is only a web browser because if you request this page from a terminal, you see the HTML page without a graphic element, only text into, uh, into your client. So now we try to split this 
server, in a REST server that provides JSON files, JSON data, so that an application that could be a browser, a web application, or a mobile application, or a terminal, or a, a desktop application in Java, in Python, in whatever, can take this data, interpret this data, and utilize this data as he want, it wants. So first step, design this API. <clears throat> REST task. So, first question. Source. What is the resource or the resources that we have in this application? How many resources we have? One, two, three, eleven. This is the interactive part in which you speak and I wrote. So how many resources? What, what, what is a resource? What's the element, the item that we manage here? Really, this is a to-do list. So we, the resource is a, I don't hear her. A task, singular. The resource is a task, okay? So our resource in all this thing is a task. Perfect. Let's draw it here. Then you, you know that in REST, um, we have three, for three, four, we can say, operation that are HTTP methods, and in, which, in each operation correspond an URL and an action. So, we have a task that is a single item, and then all the application is a collection of tasks. Okay. We can also call them to do item, but task is shorter. And then in REST, we have to design a URL for each operation. What are these operations typically for a resource in REST? You can insert, add, a, in this case, Thank you. Add a new task. Then delete a task, yes. And then modify a task. Yes, update, modify a task, a single task, and then other two. Get the full list of a task and another that is brother of this. Get to one task. Okay, in REST, you know that the best practice is to define uh, in the URL, so you will have something like HTTP, uh, address of the server, and so on, slash, that is the base that I delete up to now, and the URL, for example, for getting all the tasks is, we can make, um, add a prefix, that is API version 1.0 as best practice, which we say the server may provide other functionality, but under API, it provides a REST functionality. A REST functionality in version one, because maybe we, in a year or two year, we have a version two or a version 1.1. So we need to separate this version so that people can use also previous version for a certain time. And after we have in REST 
the collection, the collection of resources. That in our case, the collection of resources is, is the collection of resources is task, tasks. Okay, we can also have an URI like uh, version 1.0 uh, task list, for example, or to do list, or you can imagine a lot of to do items and so on. I prefer the first one because it's one, one name, one na noun, one word. It's easier also to write. These are URL, so someone should write these some, somewhere. So one word, it's easier also to mis not misspell and so on. So to get all the tasks, we have We have this URL, and which of these four methods we use to get all the tasks? Which of these? Get. Perfect. And the request we made is a get request to this address with nobody because the get request has nobody. The get request has a response. We ask a list of, of the tasks and it must give us a list of tasks. So let's try to write the JSON corresponding to this list. But before Let me do this. But before, let's do is its parent, its brother. Getting a single task, okay? So to get a single task, the method is the same. The URL, how do we modify the URL? What we put here after tasks? The ID of the task. Perfect. I wrote in this way the ID. The ID will be a number. In our case, it's an integer number. It's this one present in the database because it's already unique for our application. Perfect. So let's try to write the JSON response of this, because the other is a collection of this one. So a response of this, yes. it's a JSON object in which we have a key that is task, for example, and Inside this key, sorry, okay. Inside this key, another object. Why? Because a lot of uh, methods automatically realize this. Once a start a JSON that starts with an object and with a key, one key, one object. So this is the preferred way that is correct in JSON. It's also correct this one in JSON. With here the our task elements. Okay, we can also write this in JSON. But a lot of methods function for automatically convert data structure in programming language into JSON and vice versa. Prefer this format, so we can write this. So I 
have a task, and the task has how we describe the task. How many word right here, parameter right here, elements right here. Three, the tar. ID, so for example, ID 22, okay? And this is not capital. Then, the task that we can call a description that in our database is called to do. This is the description. And then the other element is description and uh, this is a task, a new task, no, a uh, task. And then urgent, that is zero or one. In this case, we can put zero. So this is the response that we expected to have when we wrote get API version 1.0 tasks 22. Because we want the task with ID number 22. And we get this response. Okay? So, Similar to this, we can imagine a response here. Response of get API version 1.0 slash tasks is, we can start with an object in this moment we say tasks, because this is a collection, it's uh, not one task, but more than one. And here, we can put what? An element, an array, both. We have a list of tasks here, so we can use an array. And inside our array, we'll have the single tasks. For example, the number 22, and then we can put another, just to have more than one, the number 23. This is another task, and this is urgent. And so on. We can have all the tasks in this list. So, start with an object, with a key that represents the, the content of the response, in this case tasks, because it's more than one, and this is the response for a request for more than one, and to get a single task, this. Then, and we solved the get. Now, get a single task, get uh, all tasks. Let's do the delete a task. That is easy. Let me co copy this. The delete. Uh, uh, specific task. So we need to change the URL to delete a specific task. Yes, no, maybe. And which method we use here, not get? We will use delete. 
So we need to change the URL to delete a specific task if we want to delete task number 22. We can send a delete method with URL API version 1.0 slash tasks slash the ID of the task to delete. So we don't change the URL. We change the method in which we interact with this URL. In this case, we, with a delete, we want to delete a task. With a get, we want to obtain a task on the same URL. And the delete is not a response body, typically. It may response okay with the status code to 200, or not okay, not found, ever, um, 403, internal server error, or some, something like that. But typically it's not I have a response. We can also delete the delete method. It's a bad practice to do a bulk delete. So use a delete on a collection like this. It's a bad practice. We didn't design an API for this, and you should never design an API for this. Because if in one item that you want to delete give an error, you cannot say, cannot know if the other items will be deleted or not. And you cannot say what is the item that give the problem in a bulk delete. I want to delete 100 tasks, and then at task number three, it stops. I don't know what happens after. So it's better to, to delete one task or one item at a time, a resource at a time. It's more safe also for you as a programmer. Delete. And then we want to, we can say create It's correct, create a new task and not with delete and also update an existing task. It's correct. So if you want to create a new task, methods and URL. To create a new task, we use the, Oops. sorry, Oops. the post method, yes, and the URL is the collection, yes, tasks. We create a new resource acting on the collection, not on the single item because we don't have an ID in this moment of the single item, we are just creating it. So we act on the collection. And to update an existing task, we will use the method one, it's missing, that is put. And the URL is this, we need to change. We update an existing task. I want to update task number three. So I need to change this URL, or it's okay, this URL. It's okay, perfect. So we can create, so the, the post and the put method, similarly to the delete, doesn't give a response, different from okay, not found, but both of them require a request. I want to create a new task. I want to update something of an existing task. So we need to provide to the server what is this something. So to create a new task, we started always as with an object. This is the, the request in this, this time, not the response, and we perform a post to API version 1.0 tasks with this body. This is the request body, not the response. 
and what we put inside this uh, JSON object. What are the elements that we need to provide to a server to create a task? Yes, the task description, and that we can call a description as before. Description, a new task. And if it is urgent or not. This is for creating a new task. Task has only these two elements, and we need to create everything in the task. The ID is automatically signed by the server, so we need not to provide it. To update an existing task, similarly, we can add a put to this URL. And the request body, this is, this may, be, may change. Our request body of a update. Mm, okay, this is one acceptable response. It's the same of the post. No, I saw, yes, I paste one more. But if I don't want to, uh, sorry, let me update a task. Urgent. If I want to update just the description or just the urgent, can I or I cannot tie? Here or in other way? Yes, I can, no, I can. I can update uh, only our urgent or only the description of an existing task. Yes, here or in another hypothetical method request. Up to you. Here, yes, and <laughs> how? Simply giving in the request the element to update, and the other will not be updated. So if we want to update only the description of task number 22, here you have a description. I can copy and paste this. Again, I update the description. Similar thing if I want to update the urgent. So this is the rest representation of our task uh, to the list. Yes. Okay. So now I want to implement with you this method, getting all the task. It's, uh, we can say, brother, getting a single task, and uh, not delete, and create a new task. In a REST server. I also have a copy of the, of the JSON here, just to not uh, see this continuously. So I can open by charm, close this old project, and I have a prepared a portion of a project. In this portion of a project, I have in the DB folder, the DB, the database you have, already have on your application, the exact identical database with the same, yes, with the same information in the same identical way. ID, 
column ID, a column to do with the description of the task, and a column urgent, the same DB. I put it in a folder, but it's, it's the same. Then, I have a, put a JSON folder in which I wrote uh, some JSON example that is the same example that we wrote in the, not, not, not identical, in the, in the documents. So this is the JSON for add a new task, for example, to send in a post request. And this is a JSON of a wrong JSON for adding a new task. Because for adding a new task, we need the urgent field also. So this is not acceptable for the database, for the server. And this JSON file to be used from command line, for example, with, with Shiurl or something like that, to send the request to the server, not from a website, but from another application. And then in the, the static folder is the normal static folder of the Flask. It stores CSS, JavaScript, images, and whatever, and a templates that is similar to the templates that you have uh, from the, the last lecture on Monday, in which Professor Corno added some bootstrap style to the um, to-do application. This is to have another client for our REST server. So I use the web server provided by Flask to have a REST server and also to have a client for this web server. Then I, we have the, so let me set zoom. Then I have taken the db interaction.py file that you have from the last lab, from the last lecture, from the week before, and so on. That is the Python file to interact with the database. I do not change almost anything here. It's the same identical file that you already have. The only thing that I change is the get task method that if your mind provide you task in alphabetical order, I delete the alphabetical order, and now it give us tasks in any order, in the order present in the database. I don't want the alphabetical order. Then I don't change anything, and I also create, yes, the get task method the function. This get all the tasks from the database, these get the task with a specific ID from the database. They are identical, they change only by this part. The first one to get all the tasks, say select everything from the task table, full point, and this one say select everything from the task table where the ID of the task is the ID that I provide here in the function. And then everything else is identical. I don't change anything. And then I created a task server.py that up to now is quite empty. It basically, nothing new. It import Flask and render the index client template, the index HTML, at the app root root. It add bootstrap, like Professor Corno did on Monday. Create a Flask application and start the Flask application in debug mode. That is the debug mode. Do you remind what is the debug mode? Yes, no. The debug mode, when you run, you can also run a Flask application this way, app.run. It works. 
if you put the bug equal true, it means that if you change this file, the web server automatically reload, refresh everything. So you can work and see what you made without stopping and restarting manually the web server. It automatically stops and restarts without any problem, typically. So we have this approach to define what happens when you type localhost um, local on, on the web browser. And if we run this, we go to the, to the address. And we wait. What? Okay. We see this application. This is the application for the REST server. So up to now, we don't have any task here because we don't have a REST server. So it, if we see what happens, we, we see here, trust me, um, an error because it tried to call. Uh, a new URL provided by the REST server that does not exist up to now because we don't write them. It, so it doesn't work right now. It's only scenographically. So at the root element, there is this page. So we can start now, let me close this, here to define our RESTful function. So, the first, <coughs> we can create, a, as before, the get all task function. So we can define a function called the get tasks. Okay. The function get task must respond to the app.root Here we need to put the internet the address that is the same as before. API version 1.0. Then this is get all task. Tasks. Okay? So at this when I we can say return hello, for example. So if I paste this here, I expect, yes, there is wait and hello. So it works, that's good. But then we, we should notice a, a problem with this line. In our document, it is here. We have that this URL is used here to create a new task. And it's used here to get all the task. Here is used with the get method. And to create a new task is used with the post method. Here, we don't specify anything. In fact, if we leave this code written this way, if we perform a get on this address or a post on this address, this piece of code is executed. And it's not what we want. Because we want all tasks with a get, and we want to create a new task, so something totally different with a post to the same address. So we have two ways to do this distinction. The first one is in the code. Here, try to understand if the request come from a get or from a post. As, and if it is a post, we can get the request body and process it and create a new element. Otherwise, if it's a get, we can return a list of tasks. And this is one way. A more clear way is to use the methods 
parameter provided by Flask in the uproot. The methods parameter say that here we can define which method trigger this function. So if we wrote here get, this function will be performed only when we receive a get request. If we wrote here get and post, this function will be um, executed only with a get request or a post request, not with a put, not with a delete. So in this case, we want only here, since this is the get task, that this specific method will be uh, accessible with a get request, not a post. Then we have another function that we, we can call create a new task that will have the same annotation here with post instead of get. So for example, we can define already a def create task. Return. And we can copy and paste this. And instead of get, we can write post. So the get request will execute this. The post request will execute this. The put request on this address will not execute anything because we don't have a function that map this request with this URL. Okay? Yes, no. Yes. So, what we need to do in these get tasks? We need to obtain at the end something like this, a JSON like this. And we need to fill this element starting from the database that we have. So the first thing that we need to do is import the database module, the database interaction module, that is the B underscore interaction, yes. So that we can use its function inside our um, script. And to get all the uh, tasks from the database in the ED, sorry, in the DB interaction, we have the get tasks function, so DB interaction dot get tasks. The DB interaction dot get tasks will return these tasks, and these tasks is an array, a list, okay? So we can store here tasks in a variable, and then we can say return tasks hypothetically. We have all the tasks and we return the task as a response because this is a um, function for a web server. So the return, return a response for the request. Now we want a JSON response. So Flask provide the JSONify function. The JSONify function that we need to import, the JSONify function, if we have a look to the Flask API, say that the JSONify, why? The, the JSONify function create 
a response object that is an HTTP response in the end with the JSON representation of the argument, the first element in the parentheses, with an application JSON main type. That is, the response that you receive is of JSON type. It's not HTML, it's not XML, it's not text, it's JSON. It automatically did this for you. And the argument, and this is important, to this function are the same of the dict constructor. The dict construction is the dictionary in Python. So he wants here something that is a dictionary. So we have an array. We need to provide to this function a dictionary or something like a dictionary. In this way, something is like a dictionary because there is a key that is, in this example, username, and a value that is this g.username, user.username, and so on. This build a dictionary and convert the dictionary in JSON and return the JSON. So we need to provide a dictionary in the end. And we have a list. So if we write here this, it gave us an error. To have a dictionary, we can wrote something like a dictionary by end. Our two point tasks. Our JSON, we know that our JSON must start with this element, so we add this element in the JSON function, in the JSONify function, here. So we have our starting element, the key, and this is an array, and this is something that we like because this is an array. So we are on the right path. So, but let's start, let's try to execute this, this is already in execution. No. If we go there, and we, we effectively get something like a JSON. That is, this is what we want. This is the start of an array that is okay. And then here, we, we don't want this. We, we need uh, something like this. An element with ID and a number, description and a description, urgent and another number. And here we have 22, the description, the number in square bracket, not in a JSON object because the JSONify try to convert the um, array automatically and it converts in this way. Because the array in the, JSON, in the, in the get task method is, I don't know if it's written, this task is a tuple. The JSONify translate a tuple is in an array automatically. So we need to interact a little bit with these uh, tasks before using it. So we can, first of all, define an empty dictionary. Uh, sorry, an empty array. And store this in, uh, um, for example, a task list variable, just to have another variable to support us. And then we need to say for item in a task list, we need to get each tuple and convert each tuple in a dictionary. We can create a task. Let me do this outside because we need this after prepare 
uh, sorry, for JSON, and we pass it an item. Okay, and we pass item. And here we perform the conversion, and then we append this uh, task to this array. So we convert here the, the tuple into a dictionary, and then we append this dictionary in the array, because this, we need to remind that this is a dictionary, is a conversion of a dictionary with a key and a value here. And we need here a key that is ID and a value that is 22. And then another key that is description and a value that is called Giovanni 4 and so on. So in this prepare for JSON, we take item and we say that task is a dictionary, task of ID is item of zero, task of by end description is the second element of the tuple and the task of uh, urgent, urgent, where is, yes, is uh, the third element of the item, and then we need to return task. We create a dictionary by end. So, let's try. Better, we have um, an array with a, an element, an object, a JSON object, another JSON object, a third JSON object, and so on. And these are all the tasks present in the database. And for each task, we have a description as a string, an ID as a number, and urgent as a number. They notice two things. First is that they are pretty printed. I mean that the JSONify methods give us a JSON file with new lines, with spaces, with all these things that make the JSON file bigger. If you want to have something more optimized, you have to disable the Prettify of the JSON, of the JSONify function, and you have everything in one line without spaces, without new lines, without nothing. It's more readable. And then this is not the order we created by end. I first put the ID, then the description, and then urgent. And here we have a description, ID, and the urgent. This is normal. JSON does not preserve the order of the object because these are key. You can access directly to this, no matter the order. So this is normal. And they are in alphabetical order in this case. So this creates our first RESTful API for get all task. Next, we can create here the get single task function. So the get a single task function will have, as before, an annotation similar to this, 
with the get method because we want also to use the same URI for deleting an item. But here we need to say, if you remind, that we want here an ID, the ID of the task to get. This ID in Flask is written in this way. Minor ID major. And then we can call it task ID, just to be more sure. And this ID is automatically provided to the argument of the function. So here we have a task ID, and this task ID is this task ID. So the task ID that we put on the browser here, 22, this 22 is automatically passed to the function as an argument. So we can use here the task ID. Notice two things, not really one, one thing. Here we have a task ID. We know, because we define in this way here, that the task ID is a number. But in REST, and in general in, in the web, we can also decide that this ID is a string, for example. So instead of a 22, we can say task 22. The important thing is that the ID is unique. It may be a string, an integer, whatever. We decided, because it's also cleaner, clean, that is a number, an integer number. And it's good. But here, we don't specify if this task ID is a number, is a string, what is. If we call here tasks hello, it give an error, yes, but it works. It, it call this, uh, it call this method here, then a return zero, zero is the problem. And so we need to specify that this is an integer and not a string, for example, and we can do this in this way. We put before the ID in the URL the int word. If we put the string word, it accept only string. In this case, we say that this function must be called with the get method with this URI when the task ID is an integer number. If it's given a string, it's not called this method. Moreover, we can also use this as an integer inside the function. So to get the task, we do something much more much similar to the previous function. We get from the database the task, and we pass task ID. Then we can, as before, return JSONify of, as before, we want start with this, with task as a key, and then I have the effective task. So we can write as before, I copy and paste this. Task, singular, and um, task. As before, this task is a tuple. 
So we need to convert in a dictionary, and this is why I created the prepare for JSON method. Okay, and uh, we can remove also one of these. So if we try to execute these with task number 22, I hope, yes. Task number 22 is effectively the, the task that we want. So now if I, for example, take task number three that is not present in our database. What happens? If I wrote task number three, I get the task number three, but the task number three is not present in the database. It gives us an error, okay. But it's a, a bad error, we can say, it's not a HTTP error. Is a Python, or is an error of the server that say that uh, when uh, querying the database, the database uh, is not tasked with a D3, and so it provides a none object, and it cannot convert the none object in a JSON, because it's not uh, a dictionary, it's, not, it's nothing, it's not an element, a non object. So we need to uh, intercept these and before this, we need to say if task, that is this task, is none, what we need to do if task is none? We need to provide an error, but, but a HTTP error, an error recognized by a browser, for example. For example, the 404, that is a not found error because we don't found, didn't find the, the task in this case. So we can use the abort 404 function provided by Flask and I need to add here. So if task is none, I send immediately a not found the response. So let's try. So task number three, not found. This is the standard not found for zero four response for Flask. If I if I put here the task number twenty two, I have again the JSON because task number twenty two is present on the database. Perfect, next. We need only the post, to create, the creation of a new task. So to create a new task, and then we can go home. To create a new task, we need to get, first of all, the request body because in the post we have the JSON as the body of the request. So again, in Flask, there is a request object that, that, can, that I need to import. The request object has several, maybe may have several representation, text, HTML, JSON, XML, and so on. So it has a dot JSON. When we know that the request is in JSON format, we can also request dot JSON. It gives us the uh, JSON request in a Python object. So we can use directly this, and we can put it in a variable. For example, add the request. With this variable, we can insert in the B interaction dot insert task add, add request. 
So it insert no. Okay. Ideally, we can we do this. We take the request and we insert in the database. However, the insert task wants where is the insert task? Here has two argument, the text and the urgent, separately. We have a single object with both of them. So first of all, we need to split this, to obtain, to unpack this, uh, this task. So for example, we can have a text uh, at the request of uh, um, description. because the other request object is a dictionary, so description is the key, because we have defined here that the post request has a key name description and a key name urgent, so we can access to this, that is a dictionary, something similar to dictionary, and then we can have urgent and other request urgent. So we can pass here text and urgent. Now what happens if if we send a post without a body or a body not in JSON or a body without a description or without urgent? So these four cases. So we can intercept this here. So we can say if other request is not none, that is, is a JSON object, and for example, uh, other request um, and description and urgent is in other request, this is a dictionary, so we can check if these two key are in the dictionary without is. If it's a JSON, and it's a JSON with a description key and an urgent key, we can process it, so we can get text urgent and the DB interaction. Then we need to, to, to complete this function. Since this is a function in Flask, it must have a return. We want to return, okay, everything is good. So we can return the uh, 200 uh, response, and Flask provide us with a an object, this is this response that I need to import. It has a request and also response that with this response with status equal 200, create an HTTP response, okay, with status code 200. If this, uh, uh, this line fail because the request is not a JSON, because there is no description, there is not the urgent, we need to, uh, to execute an error, for example, for 03. Because the, the operation is, doesn't, well, doesn't go well. So to try the, This is the, no, here. To try the, if everything works, I can use the, the interface I showed you before. Before we don't have this here, now it responds to the, to the rest call for get all um, tasks. And we can also try to insert to verify that is the, the post works. I hope, insert a new task, new task, and we can also mark it as urgent. And yes, here, 
we have a new task with urgent number one. If we try again without urgent, we see that this new is zero. So the API works. In the browser from here only perform a get request. So we, can, we need to have something else like a form to perform this operation. An alternative way, and then I finish, is to use a terminal with the CURL, uh, for example, this instruction. Oh, I can. That is uh, CURL, execute a post method at this address. That is uh, the address to create a new ISTA, a new task, with uh, by passing the content of this file, that is new task.json, that is the JSON representing the, the new task. This minus D is add to the request body, and this at is to get the content from the file. Without the at, you can also write directly here the JSON code. And with setting an header that say, okay, the request body is JSON file, a JSON application, is a JSON format. So if without this, without this, this, this line failed because it does not recognize that the request body is a JSON. So I stop here. On Monday in the lab, you can, I publish this on uh, GitHub. On uh, Monday in the lab, you can continue working on this uh, with a type typical uh, exercise. Uh, have a good evening and a good night. <laughs>